Thank you for the invitation and uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I enjoyed this uh, two week stay in this group. And uh, uh, actually, today is my last day. Uh, so I want to say that I really uh, excited to interact with you. And uh, uh, it was a really nice experience for me to be here. So today, I will talk about a simple possibility of baryogenesis. And in particular, I will show that uh, the uh, active neutrino oscillation can be the origin of the matter anti matter asymmetry of the universe. So, this talk is based on the uh, work on two papers. Uh, first paper is in collaboration with Ryuichiro, Bear, and uh, uh, Yuta Hamada, who is a, a postdoc in Kureta University in Girisha, and uh, I think he will move to the uh, uh, APC laboratory in Paris. Uh, the second paper is in collaboration with Shintaro uh, Ejima, who is a postdoc in uh, KEK in Japan, and also is Richard. So, by the way, this four frame comic is about uh, a scenario. It is drawn by a famous Japanese comic artist called uh, Hikustan. Uh, so, if you are interested in the, this kind of four frame comic, you can check the website there. And if you are interested in my uh, my talk, please not check the <laughs> this page, but check all papers. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is today's contents. Uh, we basically have uh, five parts. Uh, the main parts are these two parts. I will explain the basic scenario uh, for the uh, mechanism of the electrogenesis. And in the fourth part, I will uh, discuss about the application of all mechanism. Uh, so, by the way, uh, my English is not so good, so if you have any uh, comments or questions, if I have uh, said any uh, unclear thing, please just disturb me at any time. Yes. Yes, ah, okay. Thank you. So, introduction. Uh, so, the sum model of particle theory is very successful. Uh, all of the particle contents has been discovered, uh, and uh, the prediction is consistent with huge number of the experimental results. So it's great. However, there are still a few phenomena that cannot be explained within the standard model. For example, inflation at the beginning of the universe, matter anti matter symmetry uh, existing before the big bang nuclear synthesis evolved and the neutrino oscillation observed today. So this phenomena uh, cre uh, corresponded to uh, clear new physics beyond the star model, and this phenomena should be explained in some way, uh, I mean, should be added to the star model in some way. So uh, let's review on the three phenomena. So inflation. At the beginning of the universe, it is believed that there is an epoch called the inflation. So in this epoch, the, the universe, I mean the space, expands at the exponential rate. So the inflation is driven by an almost constant energy density of the universe. So the first expansion explains the uh, solves the horizon and the flatness problems. And to realize inflation, a simple possibility is to introduce a scalar particle, a real scalar particle, called an inflator. This uh, scalar particle uh, is supposed to have a potential with a flat direction. Along this flat direction, the scalar particle can slow low. During the slow low, the potential changes uh, slowly. If this potential dominates the universe, then the uh, uh, universe has inflation. At the certain era, the slow low ends, so inflation ends, and uh, the inflaton oscillates around potential minimum. If we couple this inflaton field to the standard model particles, then at the certain era, this inflaton decays into the standard model particles and decays into the, and the energy of the inflaton uh, is transferred into the radiation made up by the standard model particle. But therefore, uh, the hot universe is realized. So this, this, uh, uh, this is called uh, reheating. One thing I should mention is that 
during the uh, slow low, there's quantum fluctuation of the scalar field. This quantum fluctuation is later transferred into the anisotropy of the universe. Such an anisotropy of the universe is important uh, for the galaxy formation, and so important to generate our galaxy. Moreover, such anisotropy is observed from the cosmic microwave background. Therefore, I want to say that the inflator model is very easy, so let's believe in it. If we believe in inflation, then the question is how to uh, generate the value of asymmetry, namely how to have variogenesis. This is because inflation will dilute any pre-existing value number, so there cannot be value asymmetry as the initial condition. On the other hand, uh, to have the, the successful prediction of the big bang nuclear synthesis, uh, the value asymmetry should, be, uh, should exist uh, before the epoch of the BBM. Therefore, biogenesis should happen between the end of the inflation and uh, the beginning of the BBM. So the question is how to generate the value asymmetry. So there is a uh, there are uh, Saharov's conditions to, uh, to, uh, uh, which should be satisfied in any biogenesis scenario. For the Saharov's conditions, uh, bioelectron number violation, C and C P violation, and uh, out of thermal equilibrium. So, bioelectron number violation should be satisfied, otherwise, the, uh, the value number comes up. So, uh, the, the zero asymmetry would be remain. Uh, until today. C and CT, CB, C and CP violation should be satisfied, otherwise the production rate of value and the production rate of the anti becomes the same, so we cannot get net asymmetry. Out of thermal equilibrium, a condition should be satisfied, otherwise uh, the chemical potential for the value number becomes zero since we have value number violating interaction. So this is, these are the, uh, the, the uh, Saharov's condition. Unfortunately, in the star model, the three conditions cannot be sufficiently satisfied. So, to, to generate binary asymmetry, we need new physics. A clear new physics is neutrino oscillation, which means neutrinos have mass. However, within the star model, the neutrino mass are predicted to be zero. So, uh, so uh, we should express uh, the, the mass of the neutrino. A simple explanation is to assume that the star model is an uh, effective theory. Namely, other than the renormalizable term, there are various higher number of terms. There, uh, these terms may be generated by integrating out heavy degree of freedom, such as in the uh, system mechanism, or just exist and become strong at the high energy, uh, up to very high energy scale. Uh, in any case, the leading operator uh, the domain 5 operator is the LLH interaction term. This uh, interaction term uh, generates the neutrino mass, I mean the neutral minor mass. So we will consider minor than neutrino. And uh, since we neutrino have mass, the uh, neutrino oscillation can be explained. Uh, the important thing in my talk is that this term violates lepton number. Therefore, uh, the first condition of Saharov can be satisfied if we consider the effective uh, Lagrange. So in the context of the Meyer neutrino, biogenesis has been, discuss has, has been uh, discussed in several contexts. Uh, it is known that by assuming season mechanism, namely introducing uh, two or three right hand neutrino, somehow of condition can be satisfied with the uh, right hand neutrino sector. So there, there are many studies uh, in this kind of uh, leptogenesis scenario. Today, however, I will focus on a relatively new scenario, which is first proposed by Yuta and Yuichiro, and later developed with me. So the main difference uh, from the previous studies is that we, the right hand neutrino sector is not important. We even do not introduce the right hand neutrino in, in the main scenario. So this is today's topic. And this is what I will be talking about in uh, the following. So I will show that the value asymmetry can be explained due to neutrino oscillation with this effective Lagrangian. And uh, 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 the important thing is the neutrino oscillation at the around the heating error. 
And I will show that the value of symmetry can be explained if the, the heating temperature is greater than 10 to 8 G before the part of the decay of the inflaton to the leptons. And if the inflaton dominantly decays to Higgs bosons, our scenario can be tested from the uh, ground based experiment for neutrino. And uh, lastly, I will uh, mention that the, the application of the mechanism will be uh, to reduce the required reheating temperature. So this is the end of introduction, and uh, I would like to move to the main part. So uh, in the second part, I will discuss about leptogenesis, the yeah, active neutrino oscillation. So uh, I, sh I show you the setup and uh, how the Saharov's conditions are satisfied. So the setup is like this. We consider the renormalizable star model plus the LHH interaction term. Then immediately we get that lepton number violation is satisfied here. The C and the CP violation can also be satisfied because if we introduce this term, neutrino can oscillate. And it is known that uh, during neutrino oscillation, there can be CP violation. In fact, CP violation is a paper that uh, uh, more than two sigma level, uh, which is reported by GTK collaboration. So if we consider neutrino oscillation, C and the CP violation may be realized. And the question is last condition. So in fact, uh, we will consider the thermalization uh, around the reheating area. So this is a little bit not trivial, so let's uh, uh, talk in detail on the thermalization process. Uh, so let's consider the heating error. Now the heating is due to the infraton decay, so we consider infraton decay to the uh, standard particles via a two-body process. At the moment of an infraton decay, uh, basically our universe has two uh, standard model components. So this figure shows the component of the uh, standard model particles uh, at the uh, moment of the infraton decay. The horizontal line is the energy, particle lines number density of the thermal particles. In the left hand side, we can find a, a thermal distribution. This thermal distribution represents the thermal plasma made up by the uh, thermal particles. This thermal plasma is uh, generated due to the uh, decay of the infraton previous, namely, they are generated uh, during the, the preheating era. On the right hand side, we can find a sharp peak. This sharp peak is generated due to the present infraton decay. So it is just uh, gen uh, generated from the decay of the infraton. And uh, so the peak is at the, the mass of the uh, infraton. So we can find that this peak is out of some of this region. So this peak is, you, you know, this monochromatic model is out of equilibrium. So so you're somehow assuming that the time scales are comparable for the, uh, there's, I mean, in the infraton oscillations decay at some time scale, right? Yes. And there's also just a direct decay of those. Do you have to assume, in order for this to be significant, you have to assume something about the time scales for those two processes, right? Uh, yeah, I, I assume the summarization uh, time scale is very fast. So, so. So, uh, I mean, uh -huh. so during the oscillation, they have produced many thermal plasma, and this thermal plasma is all already thermalized. Mm -hmm. and, and at the last moment, the infraton decay is produced this one. I, I just show a, a, I mean one, one, uh, uh, one slice of the time. I guess maybe the reason I'm confused is I guess I, I guess I thought that it, I would have thought in that scenario, why do you have any significant numbers of infratons left to decay if the oscillations are, uh, you would have a, you would somehow, somehow the, 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 the process that allowed, that the, the reheating process still leaves you with a thermal distribution of infratons? Infraton. I, I said, why do you have actual infraton particles left over to decay after you uh, reheat it? That's my question, I guess. Uh, yeah. ah, this is at the moment of the reheating. Uh, I define the moment of reheating that uh, the, the, the infraton density is somehow comparable to the radiation density, energy density. Uh, 
Right. So, so there is a radiation component of the infrared component. <coughs> I guess I just would have thought that one of these products, generically, I guess I'm just, maybe my intuition is just wrong. I haven't thought about this, but my question is just, I would have thought generically one of these processes would dominate <coughs> completely unless you somehow adjusted things carefully to make the time some time scales comparable. Uh, so can I have some chunk? Uh, I, I have a problem. Okay, you okay uh, I can write the uh, So here the, the 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 capital gamma in your formula is also the vacuum decay rate of the infoton particle. Is that right? Is gamma? Your uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that I think that's the answer to my question. They are just the same time scale automatically. Uh, yes. Uh, so you wonder if then oscillation is. Uh, when the infraton oscillated, the, the decay rate will change or something? I'm just wondering why the thermal distribution is comparable in importance to the direct decay piece. That's all I'm wondering. I think, I think I'm feeling the sense. The answer is just that uh, the time scale for the decay of the thermal distribution is the same as the time scale for the decay of infraton particles. Right. And so then as you're drawing there, I think it's yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think I understand. Uh, Thank you. Uh, so so this is a, 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 a moment of uh uh <coughs> okay. And uh, if we for, push uh, forward uh, the clock by a small time scale, it's low, then we will find this more chromatic mode disappear. This is due to the uh, energy loss uh, process uh, induced by the scattering of this thermal plasma. So soon, this more chromatic mode becomes a component of thermal distribution. This means that this mode is thermalized. And so since, since this is a one-way process, the third condition of Saharov's can be satisfied. And in the following, uh, I will focus on this process, and I will only focus on this summarization, this short period. And I will show that uh, uh, the neutrino oscillation during this period uh, can uh, explain the value asymmetry of the universe. To this end, I will assume that the inflaton decay to the uh, uh, neutrino, and it is should be conjugate. And suppose the decay product uh, the state of the decay product is in the initial. It is, I write the, the quantum state like this. And let's follow the, the quantum evolution of this state. Then if the universe were empty, then the neutrino cannot oscillate due to the small neutrino mass. However, there is a thermal plasma. 
uh, corresponding to this one. And therefore, the neutrino uh, get uh, neutrino mass get some operation or get ma matter effect. Uh, like the neutrino in the sun, the neutrino uh, can oscillate due to the uh, pre-existing sun plasma. However, the neutrino oscillation cannot last too long because the dense and the hot universe is opaque to the neutrino. Due to the scattering with, uh, between the neutrino and the sum of plasma, the uh, oscillation end, is oscillation is terminated. And then this neutrino becomes a component of sum of plasma, and uh, uh, it is identified uh, uh, as certain flavor state by uh, some interaction. So I write the final state uh, as mu i. Then we can calculate the neutrino oscillation probability like this. For this formula, it's just the, the, uh, in, analog, in analog to the ordinary neutrino oscillation probability formula. And I will uh, discuss in, uh, I will discuss, I will explain this formula in detail. So the main difference from the uh, ordinary neutrino oscillation is the uh, oscillating frequency or the mass of the neutrino. In our case, the neutrino mass is uh, dominated, dominated by the thermal mass. So the thermal mass can be calculated uh, by using the thermal loop, uh, by, by using the, uh, I mean the thermal field theory. So there are uh, two contributions for the, uh, uh, the neutrino oscillation. So one contribution comes from the, the Yukawa interaction. It is a value diagram. The second contribution comes from the LHH interaction. It is a two-loop diagram. So uh, we, we, can, we have estimated the uh, sum of mass like this. Uh, so uh, the important thing is that this sum of, sum of mass is proportional to the positive power of the temperature. Therefore, at the early universe where the temperature is high, the, uh, the oscillating oscillation frequency is enhanced. The second different thing is the uh, fixed time scale of the neutrino oscillation. So the neutrino oscillate uh, uh, with a time scale of the mean free pass. So this is the one over the uh, summarization rate of the neutrino. We have estimated the summarization rate by the uh, energy loss rate uh, with, uh, 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 via the gauge interaction. Then we can calculate uh, the oscillating phase, oscillation phase by combining the, the mean free pass and the oscillating frequency. We found that the oscillating phase is 0 0.01, and this is not too small. Is it, is it, it's, it's not obvious to me that you should be using the, so the picture is that the, the, the neutrinos are oscillating, the mean free path is the, right, the distance that the neutrino goes between interactions. Yes. And so it's not obvious to me that you should be using the thermal mass to find out what happens within a single free mean free path. To me, the thermal mass is an effect, at least in, I, I think, I'm not sure, but I think it has to do with what happens after, over a distance where you have many scatters. It's an effect of the interaction with the rest of the bath. It's talking about scatterings that change the energy and thermalize it, rather. This mass doesn't change the energy, so it doesn't thermalize it. So the mean free path is the distance it goes before and it changes energy, and there's a shorter path that's relevant for the thermal mass. There's a thermal, there's a, there's a shorter distance that somehow that's relevant. Because surely, at sufficiently short distances, if I probe the, if I have a neutrino in a bath, or any other particle in a bath, if I probe it at very, very short times, it, it should not care about the bath. So there's some crossover scale. No? no? Even. Even at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to understand, so I may, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so Even decay can be forbidden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, decay can be for, for, forbidden, but decay does take place over, uh, right? Decay does take place over a finite distance also, right? Mm -hmm. 
saying, why at short he, distances? He's saying that one, his guy go, his mass guy goes like t to the fourth, and the mean three path goes like one over t to the three halves. So they have different scaling with temperature, at high temperature. Yeah, I, I get the formulas, but I'm, well, I guess I'm, I'm just confused about why. It just seems to me that in sufficiently short distances, I my the the Propagating over sufficiently short distances, the neutrino shouldn't know about the bath. I mean, decay is, a, is an example of a long distance thing, right? The decay products have to escape to infinity and so on. Yeah, I mean, the, the, For example, like if you, for example, for a photon, you have a plasma frequency, right? But you can understand classically that a plasma frequency is only applicable uh, when you look at, you know, a, a, a number of wavelengths that are long enough so that you have, you know, you you, you basically see enough stuff. Uh, I can't remember exactly how this goes, but it's it's valid in a certain range of length scales. I would think this would be the same kind of thing. So if there is maybe, I mean, there is something, then we just, if even the neutrino is very elastic, I think the neutrino dispersion relation will be changed if we not dilate it from. Yeah, but over a certain length scale, right? I mean, it's like if you're going through a material, if I'm looking at a distance that's much smaller than an atomic distance, I'm just in vacuum. It's only when I average over distances, over many atomic distances, then I see effects like the index of refraction and so on, right? So, I mean... So that's the forward scattering. An atomic scattering which should really... Right, it, I understand there's a difference between forward scattering and energy, but still, like I said, I, 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 I looked at this once for the, because I was very confused about the photon plasma frequency, it's a very similar thing, right? And you can understand the photon, fortunately for photons, you know, you can understand things in terms of classical electromagnetic waves. And there you can see that it's only for a certain range of you know, energies, frequencies, things like that, that, you know, and, 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 and therefore, you know, in time scales, there are certain, only certain ranges for which the photon mass is the right, the, the plasma mass, the massive photon with a plasma mass is the right description. Anyway, I should let you go on. I, I mean, this is my confusion. I don't want to stop you. I'm not saying... I, I just would like to understand this. Uh, yeah, I, would, uh, I always find the subject confusing. Uh, I, I'm sorry. So, uh, uh, okay. Uh, at least I, I know that the, the I mean the expansion. At, uh, so from the sum sum of field theory people, this is justified. I guess. Your question is that the sum of field theory cannot apply for, for, for this case. Well, I just would like to understand the physical justification. It seems like there's some, there should be some justification in terms of the length scale. Are you going to have a plot of this probability versus k? Maybe that will answer his question. Why don't you go on? I, mean, I really don't want to grind your seminar. I want you to deal with it. This is just my confusion, so, uh, yeah. So we're going for four, Six is just some very cool texture in the middle. Yeah, yeah, this point four. Ah, this oh, is this from numerical. Yeah. Uh, uh, I I we made the integral of the uh, this group by by this numerical. Uh, okay. Mm. So, uh, but uh, uh, I mean, uh, so, mm, 
So I, I, although I do not discuss in detail, but the, the mechanism, I mean, the, the asymmetry production is important when the, the, I mean, the oscillation becomes most important when the, the energy becomes as large as temperature. So I think that is, uh, I, I mean, uh, should be the consistent detail. Right? So the wavelength is the, the, uh, almost uh, comparable to the, to the uh, size of the, the, the Yeah, I mean, it, the thing is, it also depends on the interaction strength, right? So, you know, if a photon, again, for the photon analogy, or this case, if the interaction were zero, then of course you would not have any thermal mass. So the, and the length scale, okay, that you need, you need to look over sufficiently long length scales to, to, to have this description, that length scale also depends on the coupling, not just the temperature. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay. I guess I, I have to remind I have to remind myself also. Uh, that Andrew, so, so you should you should really probably just go on. This is quite small, so I, I mean it, it is enough. Right. Well, that's my but right. maybe not answer your question. And uh, so, so then we can estimate the the oscillating phase to be zero point zero one. And uh, 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 so, the CP violating probability is proportional to this uh, oscillating phase. Uh, this is also in analog to the ordinary neutral oscillation. So uh, we can say that the oscillating phase, oscillation phase or the CP violation may not be too small at the reheating error uh, due to the uh, thermal effect. So actually this is a, a key point of my talk. So but the CP violation probability can be. Uh, so the, 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 at the end of the day, the, the thermal contribution is very important for this mechanism to work, yes? Yes. yes. Okay. And the next question is how to observe the flavor. So to, to identify flavor, we, uh, we need flavor-dependent interaction process. So we have two processes that are flavor-dependent. One is uh, the scattering process uh, via the Yukawa interaction, charge vector Yukawa interaction. And the other is the uh, interaction uh, uh, via the MLH uh, uh, term. The new I uh, is uh, the state defined by the interaction. Strictly speaking, the new I is uh, an eigenstate of the, uh, in the interaction basis. Uh, the important thing is the second process, the HH interaction, interaction process, violate left number. So once the neutrino is observed via the LHH interaction process, anti-neutrino is produced. So the electron number is violated by two. Uh, since we have CP violation and uh, 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 electron number violation, once the neutrino is observed via this interaction, the electron asymmetry can be made. So we can naively estimate the amount of the uh, electron asymmetry uh, during this summarization process. So the asymmetry, uh, the, the, the difference of the electron number uh, divided by the uh, entropy density uh, uh, can be estimated naively like this. So this is the branch ratio of the platonic decay to neutrino, the oscillating phase, and uh, the ratio of the uh, uh, scattering cross section of the HH to the neutral. The first term uh, represents how frequently the inflato uh, produced the neutrino. The second term uh, represents uh, the probability for the uh, CP violation by assuming all the one CP phase and the central flavor structure of the uh, inflato coupled to the electrons. The last term represents how frequently the flavor is observed via the elevated age interaction. Namely, how frequently the electron number is violated. Then we get that the amount of asymmetry can be around 10 to minus 9 uh, 
with the behavior temperature is around 10 to 9 GB for the, uh, for the one batch emission. Uh, so I would like to remind you that the required asymmetry of the universe, uh, I mean the required uh, electron asymmetry, uh, which can convert into the uh, value asymmetry of all universe via the spiral uh, process is around 10 to minus 10. So if the heating temperature is greater than 10 to 8 or 10 to 9 GB, enough asymmetry can be generated due to the uh, neutrino oscillation during the summarization process. So this is a uh, main result of today's talk by the uh, naive estimation. In the following, I will confirm this result by uh, solving the uh, uh, kinetic equation. So I will confirm this result uh, from the uh, numerical way. So in, I, I will solve the kinetic equation to, to represent this summarization process. A kinetic equation is the extension of Boltzmann equations. Uh, it can be derived from the first principle, namely from the uh, Lagrangian with certain approximation. The kinetic equation uh, describe the time evolution of density matrix. Here, we consider the density matrix of left-handed electrons, and the, it, it is a three by three matrix. Uh, uh, so uh, it is a function of momentum. Now, uh, let me explain the kinetic equation. So this is the time derivative of density matrix. The first term is the oscillation term. This oscillation term represents the, uh, the effect of flavor oscillation. Uh, we can find that uh, this is a commutation between the uh, density matrix and the Hamiltonian. And Hamiltonian is a function of the uh, uh, sum of mass. The second and the third term are interaction terms. This term uh, represents the particle creation, particle destruction, and the scattering process. In the second row, I also write down the, the uh, kinetic equation for anti-electrons. The only difference between the, the two equations is the sign in front of the oscillation term. So the, this di different sign is important for CP violation, because otherwise, if there is no such sign, then the two equations become the same, so they are, the time evolution is CP symmetric. Uh, and uh, actually, this a two term contribute to the oscillation, oscillation phase. The second and third term are important in uh, the, the, the scattering process for the summarization, uh, observation of labor, and the number violation. Sorry, can you can you explain that sign? I'm sorry, it's just not uh, it's not obvious to me. Ah, the, the sign. Why is the oscillation term opposite sign? Why the 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 sign? Unless uh, it's just. Uh, it's just that you use the complex conjugate mass. What's the? Can you just tell me? <laughs> What's the? Why is it opposite? It's just not obvious to me. Uh, why this is opposite? So so I. So uh, first the idea is CP. Uh, we, we are using a. Uh, so I mean, it depends on basis. You can also take a complex conjugate uh, for 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 to to redefine that. Uh, no, in that case, this is this is the same sign if we take a complete conjugate of, of this equation. So how, row, bar, that case, the row bar is is the uh, oh complex conjugate to to define the row bar. The, the physical uh, uh, I mean the uh, yeah we what what define I mean what defines this basis then? The, we define the low ij to be something a lambda i j j and the low bar ij we define to be the uh, b uh, i b j uh, like this. So we make a, a, a
the defined definition conjugate. Mm -hmm. All right. So I define this by, by the yeah, com complex conjugate. So, so in that case, there, there are PR signs here, and but the, the space in the I mean, in the interaction uh, terms, there is CP phase in general, and uh, uh, in this basis, the CP phase in the interaction term are the same, but the, the sign is replaced. So, uh, uh, yeah, I guess that's what's confusing me. I would have thought that you know the CP violating terms would have the sign differences, but you somehow use some other basis? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I, in fact, this basis is it's based on this paper. Uh, uh, so, uh, so what's the definition of A and B? A and B, uh, I'm sorry, this is the, 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 the uh, the creation, of, creation of, the the of the level the particles and this is anti I never understood anything about any of Rafael's papers except the answer. The answer is always very clear, <laughs> but the derivation, I never understand anything about the derivation. But, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, so. Again, I don't want to keep stopping you. I'm trying to <laughs> yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, so there, there are uh, two phases. One, one is CP even phase, the other is CP odd phase. So in, the, I mean, in any amplitude, there are two kinds of phase. So for example, I could ask the question, somehow on this basis, it seems to, you're seeming to say that if I were to somehow turn off oscillations, I would not have any, uh, any leptogenesis. Even though I have CP violation, I have out of equilibrium, uh, but if I don't have these oscillations, it seems that this equation says I don't get any asymmetry. And why is that? Uh, don't see. these interactions also violate lepton number? It seems like it seems like the interaction terms would buy, satisfy all the Sakharov conditions, but this equation says that if I don't have oscillations, I don't get any asymmetry. Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, so you know, in the CP violation, we need to to phase one the CP even phase and the CP odd phase. Okay, so in this uh, in this scenario, we consider the the uh, so there is CP auto phase in in the uh, the uh, interaction uh, term, and the CP even phase is in oscillating term, which is generated by the Schrodinger equation. So CP, CP even means CP conjugate does not change the phase, and the uh, so I, I can. You're saying that, um, yeah, in normal, normal sort of thermal baryogenesis or leptogenesis, it's not enough to have a CP violating phase somewhere. It actually needs to, you need an interference between right. a, a, a CP violating and a CP conserving. Uh, and that's the normal situation. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so here that interference is played by the interplay between the oscillations and these interactions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 In the ordinary it's the, right. the thermal electrogenesis. Yeah. So uh, normally, for example, yeah, you can't use you can't use tree level, you might have some interaction that has CP violation in it and you think, oh great, I'll just use that at tree level. But that doesn't work, right? Yeah, 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 because yeah. you just square the amplitude and then it's yeah, 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 yeah. so it needs to interfere with yes, something yes, yes. that conserves CP. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So then you generally have to go to loop order. Here, instead of that, your your interference is with the oscillation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so the like the indirect uh, yes, CP yes, violation yes. of KK bar or mini bar. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. So, so in the the, the thermal electrogenesis, the, the CP even phase come come from here. Very good. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. Thank you. Actually, oscillation is effectively one. I think the one look like. It's actually fit. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so the okay, so I hope it's and we solve this equation, uh, the equations by uh, by by some approximation. One approximation is uh, we divide the the I mean, 
the uh, we consider the, the integrals of the uh, uh, test matrix in two regions in the momentum space. The two regions are uh, corresponding to the these two uh, modes, one is the energy the momentum around the temperature, one is the momentum around the infrared mass, high energy mode and low energy mode. Then the high energy mode uh, variable is estimated like this. It is the integral of the, uh, the test matrix divided by the uh, entropy density at around the, the high momentum. And uh, delta rho t is, uh, represents the, the deviation uh, 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 from the, I mean the fluctuation uh, from the uh, thermal equilibrium. And we derive the equations, approximated equations for the for these two variables. Uh, the equations like this, and uh, we have derived uh, the uh, interaction, corresponding interaction terms and the uh, oscillatory terms. But I, I skip explaining this, it is too complicated. Uh, also we have solved the, the uh, equation for the right-handed charged leptons and the uh, anti-leptons. The initial conditions uh, can be set like this. This is corresponding to the previous discussion. And then we can solve the kinetic equation to obtain the numerical result. So the horizontal line is the reheating temperature. Vertical line is the amount of asymmetry divided by the uh, branching ratio of the infrared decay. The horizontal purple line is the required amount of asymmetry to explain the variance asymmetry of four meters per scalar process. Uh, the red curve shows the case the inflaton mass to heating temperature uh, is 1. The orange curve is the case that the mass to heating temperature is 100. So we can find that from here, uh, when the heating temperature is greater than 10 to 8 GB, then uh, uh, scenario works. So biogenesis can be successful. Uh, due to the active neutrino oscillation during the uh, summarization report. Uh, so we have confirmed our scenario uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in a numerical way. So, so uh, actually, this is the uh, end of the second part. Is there a question? Now I would like to move to that. Uh, just a qualitative question. So the the, the 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 thermal mass is aligned in the interaction basis. Yes. Yes. Because it tends to it's caused by the interaction. So it's a diagonal, it's a piece that would be diagonal in the interaction basis. Yes. Yes. So so why does it then actually uh, increase the amount of oscillations? Naively I would have thought just that, that would tend to suppress the amount of oscillation? Uh, so, the, I mean, the, the, so this is the oscillation. Uh, uh, in, so let's consider the, the low temperature. Uh, uh, I, 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 so the os oscillation phase, I mean, the, the thermal mass formula is different from the the sketch and date formula and the diagram are also different. So, so okay, to have oscillation, we should have the, the basis, the mass eigen basis and the observation basis different. So, what, what interactions are giving rise to the thermal mass? Not these, but some other interactions? Uh, the dominant interaction is this. The dominant, for, for low, at least for low heating temperature, for low heat uh, around the Below maybe 10 to 13 GB, the dominant one is uh, via this interaction. But the observation is made by this. So the base is different. Okay. Only, only when the observation is via this interaction, then we can have the electron number vibration. And, and so and, and, and that, that just comes out automatically that this one dominates the thermal mass and that one dominates the. the uh, the observation, the, the, the energy changing interactions, that's just uh, it a fact, or can I understand that? It, it depends on temperature. This, 
this interaction rate increases with the uh, temperature to the third, right. but the, 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 the mass, I mean, the oscillator phase, the mass increases with the uh, temperature to the uh, uh, linearly. So, so depends on the temperature. Uh, right. So, but like at high temperatures, why? I'm just like asking why. Why this? Can you go back to where you just uh, No, no, just back to the diagram. Right. To the yeah, there. Okay. There. So the the diagram on the right, at at high temperatures, it does not control the thermal mass. It controls the thermal mass. And it also controls the the, the observation. Observation, yes, yes. So then my question is why since the since the thermal mass is diagonal in the interaction basis, uh, doesn't yeah. that suppress the inter the Yeah, yeah, uh, actually it uh, uh, so it, it decreases. Okay, so yeah, that's it, it responsible is. for that decrease of high temperatures. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's at, at lower temperatures. Uh, Okay. That's okay. I think I'm. Uh, I mean, to say in, in those two limits, there's only one term dominating. That's why. You know, mm -hmm. Why? Uh, yeah. Dominate. Low and high temperatures. Is that? Is that? Yeah. Go ahead. Is that clear? No. No. What was the You have these two contributions to the thermal mass and the two contributions to the measurement, right? So yes. both low and high temperature only one term uh, dominant, so you don't get any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which only in the middle where there's some of the cell line between these two right terms. Okay. Right. Is that the explanation? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of the, the only one right. dominates, but the uh, uh, particle should lay down. I mean, it spans, I mean, this region spans many orders of magnitude, right? I mean, it takes, I guess it's a log log plot, so I guess it's just the power, okay, yeah, it's the power going up and the power going down. Mm -hmm. Okay. For instance, you, you assume the other time, well, it was the infrared time in case of neutrino plus x, you don't care about the x, but uh, if, uh, what do you assume about x? Let's see something else? Uh, 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 so, uh, uh, so uh, actually, we just consider the initial condition of neutrino. Uh, strictly speaking, the x should be the uh, so in fact, when the scala, uh, if we consider this is the CP even scala, then it decays. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, if, if this scala it decays to uh, here it's chirality suppression, so it decays to neutrino, neutrino and uh, charge the electron and Higgs. It should be three to decay. So, uh, street is speaking. And what are you assuming for this branching ratio? I mean, or the rate or something? You must be assuming. You uh, have to assume that it's efficient enough. Uh, uh, in in, in so Oa. Number. Uh, uh, you say a charge at that time and the trigger and the non Higgs, right? A W. W. Charge left on. Because the infrared time is neutral. Charge the Higgs. Okay. It's a symmetric thing, so. But anyway, it's a little different. It's a W, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what was the question? So, uh, so the, the branch ratio is here, so if. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if is. you take the branch ratio 0.01 or something, you get a uh, multi charge surface. So in, 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 in this scenario, the, the branch ratio comes linearly, so uh, uh, we can just uh, take it out. Wait, um, the required line is branch ratio is one, right? Uh, branch ratio, uh, you can... Oh, divide yeah, yeah. Branch, yes. yeah, yeah, so you, you can take the branch ratio to be one to, to, to uh, finish the... Uh, then it corresponds this to the required line. Uh, this, uh, this is the line for the correct uh, binary yeah. symmetry. So to explain the binary symmetry. The branching ratio is the line you want to be on this line? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes.
Oh, oh that's right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, this thing shows you can have a very low branching ratio and it can still work. Yes. So, for example, here, right. Ah, I see. Ah, that's good. Okay, uh, then, uh, in fact, all scenario uh, depends on the initial condition of the, uh, maybe how in fact the decay to the standard model. But, so it depends on the pattern between the input and the standard particles. To be concrete, let's consider uh, 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 the, the uh, simple possibility that the inflaton dominantly decay to the standard model via renormalizable coupling. Then the uh, uh, Lagrangian like, becomes like this. The dominant Lagrangian becomes like this. So phi hit 6 and phi phi hit 6. This is due to the uh, renormalizability and the, the, the gauge symmetry. And I want to notice that the coupling A and lambda phi are real parameters. This is because the Lagrangian should be real and the, the, the inflaton field is a real scalar field. Uh, via this interaction, the inflaton can decay into the Higgs pair. Then uh, uh, this Higgs pair, I mean the, the Higgs scatter with the pre-existing sum of plasma, and produce leptons. In particular, via the FLH inter interaction term, it can produce a neutrino. And uh, 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 since this term uh, explains the neutrino oscillation, this, the produced neutrino is have a flavor polarized in the I mean, non-trivial vector in the uh, flavor space. Uh, what I want to say is that this neutrino would undergo flavor uh, oscillation. Then uh, the other flavor oscillation baryogenesis uh, can happen as previously. So I will, dis I, I will uh, numerically estimate this soon. But uh, uh, here I want to emphasize that uh, uh, in this scenario, the CP phase only appear through the uh, LLHH interaction, namely from the PMS matrix. This is because the additional parameters are both real. So they don't have CP phase. Then the binary symmetry of all universe is related with the CP phase in the PMS matrix. Uh, this is the initial condition corresponding to the, uh, this process to, pro to produce the high energy uh, neutrinos. And uh, uh, this is the numerical result. So the horizontal line, again, is the heating temperature. Vertical line is the uh, amount of asymmetry divided by the, the uh, I mean, this is the amount of asymmetry. And this time, we have several lines with different colors. Different colors correspond to different Majoran phase. And here, we consider normal hierarchy. And we fix the Dirac phase to be minus pi over 2. Uh, this the horizontal purple lines are the required amount of symmetry. Uh, we have also different two kinds of the line. One is the solid line. The solid line represents the, the, um, that the, the asymmetry is in good side, which means that the, the converted baryon symmetry uh, is consistent with over universe, namely baryon dominates over the anti-baryon. Uh, on the other hand, on the dashed line, uh, the anti-baryon dominates, so it is not consistent with over universe. So from this figure, we can find that for certain heating temperature, for example here, here or here, uh, the certain uh, marrow phase, uh, the uh, amount and the sign of the asymmetry of the whole universe can be explained. Is the uh, determining this when you get the correct sign? What to determine the correct sign? What, what sign is changing? What, what is changing between the dashed line and the uh, in your model, what's changing between the dashed line and the solid line? Ah, the marrow phase it changes. So, you mean that uh, this yes, this phase changes. Okay, so some some of them you get solid line, some, some of, of them you get dashed line. Yeah, it's so which one, confusing. Which one give you dashed line? Which one? Uh, you should just dash the ones in the. <laughs> <laughs> you should dash the <laughs> this. Uh, yeah, you should dash yeah. the lines that are dashed. Uh, but but <laughs> it becomes a solid in high degree. Oh. <laughs> so, oh. so for example, the 
the black line, black line, which is black line. This, this one is this one. So uh, uh, the, the marrow has pi over 4 corresponds to this one. But uh, it becomes the solid line at the, uh, at the height of the Sorry for the confusion. Uh, so uh, I have shown that the, 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 our prediction depends on the Marlowe phase, and uh, our prediction also depends on the Dirac phase. So this is the case when we take the reheating temperature to be around 10 to 12 GB, and the uh, horizontal line is the Dirac phase. But in the Dirac phase, we found that the asymmetry changes. Uh, uh, uh. So, so the prediction depends on that. Also, the Dirac phase. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. this So, you prefer the Marijuana phase to remain uh, Yeah, in this case, Marijuana phase is uh, to be minus mm -hmm. for, for, for this temperature mm -hmm. range. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so this means that the uh, uh, wash scenario uh, is linked with the new CP violation in, in the ordinary neutron oscillation because the CP violation in ordinary neutron oscillation depends on the black phase. Now, on the other hand, the wash scenario can be also related with the uh, uh, neutron less than beta decay. Uh, so this figure shows the prediction on the uh, effective neutrino mass by varying the lightest neutrino mass. And here we consider the uh, heat and temperature very high, greater than 10 to 15 GP, and we fix the, the, the uh, Dirac phase in my mass pi over 2. And the color of the range. Is it possible? Hmm? Is it possible? Um, uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, 10 to 16 GB, more than 10 to 16 GB may be difficult because they are constrained from the tensor to scalar ratio on the total energy of the uh, 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 universe. So, the, the, the heat temperature can not be bigger than that, larger than that, 10 to 16 or 10 to 17 GB. But uh, 10 to 15 to 10 to 16 GB may be possible. Cosmologists just get to assume that the potential is flat. Irrespective of all the interactions, you need to make it decay later on. So, so if the interaction, I mean, if the interaction is very strong, then the decay uh, is fast, then maybe the temperature is higher than the And a miracle makes it. Flat. <laughs> <laughs> when it's, when it's yeah. 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 But, uh, so, this uh, very high heating temperature scenario uh, uh, predicts the M E uh, above the 0 0.001 volt. So, if uh, one can uh, uh, test the double beta decay, uh, one have to correspond to this uh, uh, mass bench, then we will make our this part of so you can explain the band, at least two bands I will, 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 will
Uh, this curve is the, the, the general prediction of the. Uh, so we. Uh, WEE is the, the effective mass for the electron neutrino and the electron neutrino. And we vary the, the, so the horizontal line is the lightest neutrino mass. And we vary uh, the, the Majorana phase uh, for, for the net range. We see in this range is a parameter region for the general uh, uh, neutrino model. So oh, the okay. Okay. Requiring you to get okay. the thing yeah, This is an uh, in inverted uh, TLR. I see. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, this is the end of the uh, third part. And in the fourth part, I will uh, discuss about the possibility to decrease the heating temperature. Uh, maybe I, I should finish soon. So, so, uh, so we consider two possibilities to, uh, to lower the heating temperature. Uh, uh, the motivation is that you know, low heating temperature is favored in several uh, theoretical contexts. For example, in Suji, uh, there is gravitino problem, and gravitino uh, is rarely produced if the heating temperature is low. So the question is whether we can have a, a simple electrogenesis with low heating temperature. So in this part, I will uh, consider two possibilities to reduce the reheating temperature, require reheating temperature for the biogenesis uh, by using the uh, mechanism of the active neutrino oscillation during the thermalization. So first, we, we introduce the Leiden neutrino. And uh, in this scenario, uh, I will show that the uh, enough body asymmetry can be generated due to the asymmetry separation process. So this is a, 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 the, the a story is almost the same in the, uh, from the as the previous discussion. So we consider the case neutrino, and this neutrino has a flavor oscillation, and the, the flavor oscillation is terminated due to the scattering with the sum of plasma. And uh, the main point is that sometimes this neutrino is observed uh, via this the new Yukawa interaction. Uh, with the Leiden neutrino. Once the neutrino is observed via this interaction, the active neutrino becomes uh, the uh, Leiden neutrino. So uh, since this neutrino oscillation can provide CP direction, we have the uh, asymmetry separation or distribution of the asymmetry uh, in the Leiden neutrino set and the Leiden neutrino set. All of total asymmetry, net asymmetry is zero, the, uh, the right hand neutrino sector and the left hand neutrino sector both have no minus in electron symmetry. But only the left hand neutrino sector uh, asymmetry is converted to the value asymmetry. So the, if this is non zero, the value asymmetry can be generated due to the spiraling process. And we can estimate the amount of asymmetry. Uh, then we get uh, just, just like before, and uh, we get the uh, asymmetry. Sorry, so what happens to the right-handed neutrinos eventually? Uh, the right-handed neutrino uh, uh, will become, so first the right-handed neutrino can be some, some left asymmetry, and the right-handed neutrino becomes non-relativistic, then decay. Yeah, but if that decay preserves lepton number, you would get a symmetry at the end of the day, right? the, the de This is my number, so the decay doesn't preserve lepton number. So the electron number is just vanish. Okay. And yeah, right. So just that's right. It's only in the limit of yeah, right. Sorry, got it. Uh, right. Thank you. Thank you for the question. And uh, uh, the when the uh, Yukawa coupling is around ten to minus six, we can get uh, ten to minus ten asymmetry. And so so we can get enough asymmetry. Uh, is not too large Hugo coupling. In, in fact, this Hugo coupling is even smaller than the electron Hugo coupling. Um, interesting point is that this formula does not depend on the heating temperature. Uh, so this is the numerical simulation of the uh, symmetry separation process. And uh, uh, for the Hugo coupling around 10 to minus 6, we indeed find that uh, the uh, 
of the horizontal lines of time, vertical lines of amount of synergy divided by the branch ratio, we found that uh, indeed the produced uh, separated asymmetry can be as large as 10 to minus 10 to 10 to minus 9. And uh, in fact, uh, although the formula do not depend on the reheating temperature, there is a lower bound on the reheat temperature uh, from the condition uh, that the right and neutral should not be summarized. So this is needed, otherwise the, uh, the separated asymmetry cannot be kept. If it is summarized, then the, the asymmetry, right and neutral asymmetry becomes you know, mixed with the left and neutral, you know, then there is no uh, the barrier symmetry is also washed out. Uh, the summarization temperature is around the uh, uh, 7 dB for the uh, right and neutral. Therefore, we should have the mass of the right and neutral greater than this 7 dB. So that the before the summarization, the right and neutral becomes non-relativistic non and uh, decay. And on the other hand, we should produce this right hand neutrino since we should observe the active neutrino oscillation via the, the, the previous diagram, via the equal interaction. So from the kinematics, the reheating temperature should be greater than, than this mass. Therefore, we get that the reheating, that leptogenesis can be successful if the reheating temperature is greater than, than 10 dB. And I want to uh, emphasize that in this scenario, we don't need to introduce uh, uh, fine tuning among the right hand neutrino masses. Since only one right hand neutrino is enough to generate the fine asymmetry. Uh, lastly, I uh, mentioned uh, we can uh, also enhance the left asymmetry by assuming some non trivial reheating dynamics. Uh, so, so far we have assumed that inflaton decay, part of it decay, the heat the universe, but uh, there is also possibility that the, from the scattering, the reheating complete. This is called the dissipation effect. In this case, there is no sum of blocking effect for the inflaton decay, so the, the, uh, the reheating can be very significant. And in, in particular, the, the, the produced lepton can be uh, much more than the previous case. In that case, the, the uh, out of, I mean, the, the, to, to be summarized, uh, right and neutrino can be produced mainly, and uh, the final asymmetry can be generated uh, mainly. And in this case, there is an enhancement and which reduces the required reheating temperature. In the LHH uh, interaction scenario, the heating temperature can be as low as 10 to 6G given the heating temperature of divided mass to and in the CISO scenario, we, which we have just discussed, the heating temperature can be even uh, as low as uh, 100 GB, which is the, uh, the threshold for the, uh, around the, the uh, spiral to work. So this is the end of my talk. I have shown that uh, the, the, the asymmetry of the universe can be explained due to neutral oscillation is the effective Lagrangia around the heating effort. And uh, for the inflaton decay to be neutrino, the, the heating should be, the heating temperature should be greater than, than 10 to 8 GB for, for the enough amount of the volume asymmetry. If the inflaton dominantly decays to the Higgs boson, the scenario can be tested from ground-based experiments. Uh, if there is a uh, light, bright and neutrino, then uh, the heating temperature can be decreased due to the asymmetry separation uh, process. And uh, if we consider some exotic heating scenario, the heating temperature can be uh, even as small as over uh, uh, F3 scale. So thank you very much. Questions? You've been very quiet, Marcus, in this uh, question. I'm all tired now. <laughs> okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.